Howdy, with this essay, I want to go over, uh, I mean, with this video, I want to go over essay number two. I'll make sure you understand what I'm looking for, or at least enough so you can get started and ask good questions. Um, don't forget, we're on a revised schedule. Uh, the, the one I posted was missing a week. Um, so it actually, it's kind of a good thing. It gives us a little more time to work on the second essay. Uh, I'm doing this video on Friday the 16th, March 16th. Um, for Monday the 19th, your thesis for essay number two is due. Uh, for the 22nd, first two paragraphs are due. Those will just be a check-in to make sure you're on the right track. Uh, you don't want to write the entire essay and have me go like, no, that's not what I'm looking for. So uh, these check-ins with the thesis and the first two paragraphs are kind of important. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, uh, especially for internet courses. Sometimes there can be a little miscommunication or a little confusion. We want to make sure uh, we're not heading down a bad road there. Uh, the draft's due on the 26th. I'll send out the peer reviews then. Uh, peer reviews would be due on the 29th, and then the essay is due on the 2nd. Uh, after that, we'll get into poetry. Uh, we'll start the third essay, and within there, uh, you need to come see the never-ending story here at Northeast State, so make sure you're making plans for that. Um, the third essay is going to be due that Monday after the play. Uh, then I'll assign the final exam, which will be based on the play, and you'll have a week to complete that. Uh, and that's going to be kind of the end of the class. Response number 10 is going to be a survey of the class. It's not going to be anything you have to study for or read much about. Um, I, do, I, I do appreciate feedback from students once uh, about the class. It helps me improve it or, or make changes that might uh, benefit the next class. Uh, and you've been, a, been from previous surveys. So um, but anyway, that's what that's going to be. And finals week, uh, basic, basically waiting for me to get your grades back to you and make sure everything looks right. And um, then you're ready for a good summer break, right? Uh, so we're kind of heading downhill, hopefully. Uh, you know, still got a couple essays to write and still got some work to do, but hopefully you can kind of see what you need to do. Uh, for essay number two, you're going to find all this material under material for essay number two. Uh, I've learned not to be clever with wording and just tell students what, what it is. Um, under here, you're going to see the essay assignments. You're going to see your topic choices. Uh, you're going to see a review of fiction terms, which are going to be kind of the same as this fiction terms list. Um, I'll click on that real quick. And what you'll see there is just a kind of a brief discussion on different terms. You have to use at least five of these in your essay number two. So you need to kind of understand what they are. Uh, a lot of these you've had before or you're going to be like, oh yeah, okay. But uh, some, of them, some of them might be new, so you might need to review, the, re review those. I'm trying to talk too fast. Um, but uh, the essay assignments right there. I'm going to pop it up here uh, and go over it a little bit. Uh, for this one, you're going to write a thousand word minimum mess, uh, essay. It's going to be, have six paragraphs. I'm going to tell you what I want in each paragraph so you don't have to worry about the format of the essay too much. Um, and word count shouldn't be a problem. If you're not making a thousand word word count, you're doing something wrong and you need to you know, contact me and kind of tell me, it's like, I, I know I'm supposed to have a thousand words, but I can't quite get there. Uh, generally, word count's not a problem. Are uh, you going to utilize, utilize at least two sources? Uh, most internet students use the internet, right? Uh, so I want you to first go to .edu sites. Uh, this doesn't mean they're always good, and .edu might be some third grader posting <laughs> from a you know elementary school or something. Uh, generally, .edu is reserved for colleges, but you never know. Uh, so it has to be a good, reliable site. If you want to use a non-edu non site, uh, that's okay as well. But make sure you get my permission. You want to kind of avoid Wikipedia and you know things that don't even have an author to them. Um, I'm going to go down here. Um, and the first paragraph of this essay, you're going to discuss Oedipus the King and kind of use that as a lead in into your topic. Um, you might discuss a theme within Oedipus or a technique within Oedipus. Uh, that's going to relate and introduce your essay a little bit. Uh, you should quote at least once from the play for support. Um, the second paragraph is going to define the literary movement. And what you're going to do when you look at your topic choices, you're going to see, well, let's go ahead and go to them. I don't know why I'm acting like I can't go to it. This is the topic choices for essay two. And what you're going to see is you're going to match up a short story to a particular movement or tradition. Uh, so if you want to, if you love Ernest Hemingway and you want to do the snows of Kilimanjaro, you're going to relate that to American modernism. Basically, you're going to relate to it in three ways. Uh, you might talk about narration. You might talk about the power of, of, of the, will, the female character within the within the story, uh, and one other thing. 
And then you're going to spend a paragraph on each one of those uh, points of comparison. Uh, but for modernism, you got Faulkner and Hemingway. Uh, as we start getting into existentialism, uh, looking at authors like uh, Flannery O'Connor, who you've already read. Uh, if you like The Good Man's Hard to Find, you'll probably like Good Country People as well. It's a, it's a strange, uh, <laughs> strange short story, but similar themes to uh, A Good Man's Hard to Find. Um, but there, there's other ones, the existentialism, postmodernism, postcolonialism. These are going to be modern writers. I think the only one who's not still alive is Donald Bartholomew. Um, I'm sorry if he is alive and I just <laughs> killed you off. <laughs> um, but The School is a very interesting short story. Uh, you're going to see definite themes of postmodernism. Uh, you're going to be halfway through going, like, what in the world's happening here <laughs> at this school? Uh, Alice Walker, if you've ever read The Color Purple or seen the movie, uh, that's Alice Walker that's in her short story, Everyday Use. Uh, seems fairly straightforward at first, but there's some interesting uh, ideas and themes being developed within that story. Uh, Los Mendidos, a short play by Luis Valdez. Uh, it can be very funny at times, and sometimes like, hey, hey. <laughs> um, so it's kind of examining our attitudes towards Hispanics within our culture. Uh, likewise, Sherman Alexi, a Native American writer, um, just almost just as famous for his poetry as well. Uh, but this is what it means to say Phoenix, Arizona was made in made into a movie called Smoke Signals. Um, and it, it's about the Native American culture and how it's been changed or destroyed or <laughs> transformed by the, 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 the colonialism that took place uh, in our country. Um, but once your old culture's destroyed and you don't identify with the current culture, you're kind of an existentialist, postmodernist, postcolonial <laughs> quandary about who you are and uh, how things work, right? Uh, and that's one, one thing that that short story gets into a little bit. Uh, you've read a portion of Jennifer Egan's Black Box. If you want to, if you like that, and kind of intrigued by that, and you want to turn that into an essay, that's fine. Uh, the 400 Pound CEO is kind of a depressing short story, uh, but it's a good classic example of a postmodernist writer writing, you know, using postmodernist themes and techniques. Um, you're going to be halfway through the story. It's like, is this real? Is this really what's happening or what's going on with our narrator? Uh, lots of interesting stuff in that story. A little depressing, though. I'll, I'll warn you up front. Um, and Brownies, a short story by ZZ Packer. Another good short story. She's an African-American writer, a female writer. Um, and Brownies is looking at the African-American culture in terms of the broader uh, white culture and uh, how things might work or don't work or <laughs> how things are perceived. Uh, so some really good short stories uh, dealing with the movements we're talking about with, with the second half of the semester. And uh, basically, once if you read them, if, if you're a page into it and you're like, this is the worst story I've ever read, then, then stop. You're not going to like it. <laughs> it's not going to change on you too much. Um, it might take you, so you don't, don't feel like you have to read every one of these stories all the way through. Kind of look at the first couple of pages, and if you're like, nope, go on to the next one. Uh, so take a little, you know, little scanning a little bit, seeing if you, seeing if you can find a story you want to work with, or at least the one that will, will be at least painful for you to work with. Uh, but those are your choices, uh, and you have to use these choices. You can't uh, use uh, in, in a, a one story, a different story. Um, but the way this essay is going to work, the first paragraph is going to discuss Oedipus the King, and you should discuss it in terms of what you're going to talk about, or at least one of the themes you're going to talk about in uh, the rest of your essay. Uh, and you're going to quote at least once from the play for support. And you want to kind of use Oedipus as kind of a lead-in into the ideas you're going to discuss. Uh, the second paragraph, you're going to define the literary movement. You want to use good sources. Uh, and at the end of the second paragraph, you're going to give your thesis statement. Uh, so if you're going to say, I'm going to use good, a good man's hard to find. I don't want to give an example from here. Um, but if you want to talk about existentialism and a good man's hard to find, uh, that's that's where you start. You're going to have to define existentialism. Uh, and that sounds easy, but you're going to, when you get to the sources, they're going to say things like existentialism is very difficult to define. You're going to be like, I need to do it for this essay. Come on, dude. Um, so you might, and you might have to piece together two or three good sources to get a good definition. Um, that second paragraph should probably not really mention Flannery O'Connor too much. Uh, you want to define existentialism and get a really good working definition so you can pull your discussion points out of that definition. Uh, but your th thesis statement, basically a three-point three thesis uh, from the old five-part essay days. 
Um, but you're going to relate the short story to that movement in three ways. So if I was going to relate existentialism to a good man's hard to find, uh, I might talk about how the, the family lives meaningless lives through pretense and mask as there's kind of going through life. I might talk about the, the, the misfit and all that existential angst and his inability to find meaning in life. Uh, and probably one, then I'll need one other point to, to develop there. Uh, but with that idea, with the misfit, you know, pounding is, oops, sorry, <laughs> don't hit your computer. Uh, with, the, if, with the misfit pounding his you know, fist on the ground saying, if I'd have been there, I'd have understood, I'd have been a different man. Um, not quite understanding how he's supposed to receive, well, in this case, uh, the Christian God's word uh, or understanding about how he should be behaving. Uh, same thing with Oedipus. Oedipus is going through the same thing, right? You know, if, if you can tell me how you can get a God to speak when God doesn't want to, I'd, you know, I'd, be, I'd, I'd appreciate it. That's one of the lines from the play, paraphrased. Um, but a lot of confusion about who, who the gods favor, what the gods want. Uh, you know, of course, it turned out the gods were kind of against what he was doing, right? Um, that would be kind of a good lead-in into the discussion on existentialism and the good man's hard to find. I was getting into this question of how do we know what the gods want. Um, but again, first paragraph is Oedipus, second paragraph is just your definition. Don't, don't, you don't have to introduce Flannery O'Connor or anything like that. Um, you might do that right before you get to your thesis, but, um, but this should be really focused on defining the literary movement. Uh, then once you give those three ways, you're going to relate the story to the movement. You're going to spend a paragraph on each one of those ways. So I'd have a paragraph on how the family leads empty lives. Uh, give good examples, show, show the reader what I'm talking about. Next paragraph, uh, the fourth paragraph, we'll talk about the misfit and his existential angst and his inability to uh, find meaning in life. Uh, then the fifth, fifth paragraph, we'll talk about my third point, whatever that might be. Uh, then my sixth paragraph is going to be my brilliant conclusion. Uh, I'm not going to repeat my thesis. I'm not going to repeat my essay. Let's just let's kind of give us a big picture. What are we supposed to take from your analysis? Um, and just repeating what you've said before doesn't really give us that information, right? I should, should, short, should quote at least three times from the short story in question. Uh, that's just normally you can do more than three, but you want to use quotes to support what you're saying. Uh, make sure the quotes support what you say. Don't let quotes say things for you. So don't, don't give a quote and not talk about it and expect the reader to do all the work. Uh, uh, make sure you comment on all quotes. Make sure you introduce all quotes. Uh, I should I'll have all the fun punctuation. I should use five of those fiction terms on the literary fiction terms list, which I showed you. And uh, there's some words to avoid while you're writing. Um, so the challenge with this one is generally the first two paragraphs. Uh, trying to figure out how am I going to tie Oedipus into this and, and have it all make sense. Um, the second paragraph, you know, getting that definition going, going to good sites and, and piecing those, that, that information together. Uh, and those three ways that your story relates to the movement should come from your definition of the movement, right? Uh, and that's kind of the big challenge with this essay. And generally, once students get the first two paragraphs, they're ready to uh, get going on it. Uh, to search for .edu sites, well, let me get to Google. Um, one, make sure you're kind of in the American version of these movements. And if you do site colon .edu, uh, and this is kind of the trick here. This will limit your search to .edu sites. Uh, it's a neat function with Google. And you can see uh, you got all these .edu sites. Hopefully going to be fairly good. Uh, and what you might end up doing is go back and revising your search. Because you're going to see modernism covers a lot of uh, material. Um, just my computer just beeped at me. Uh, and it might give you some suggestions, but you can notice it's sticking to .edu sites because you have that site .edu. That kind of keeps you from having to go through a billion, you know, main web pages trying to find some good information. Again, you might end up going through a, a couple of these and piecing them together to get a good, you know, listing of what modernism is and how it's going to apply to your essay. Uh, but that's how you, you do that .edu search, and that'll save you quite a bit of time. Um, but the first thing you want to do is kind of go run through the stories a little bit, see which one you want to use. Um, and then 
you want to start, you know, doing the research, thinking about how you're going to compare that to Oedipus the King. Uh, but what I'm looking for on Monday is this thesis statement saying that I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to relate barn burning to modernism in these three ways and give me those three ways. And that, that way I'll know you're kind of on the right track. Uh, and again, it might take you some of the research to to come up, get down to that point where you know which three points you want to talk about. Um, but that's about it. It's easy to talk about. So, you know, it's a little harder when you get to writing. So be sure to let me know if you have any questions. <coughs> Once we get the thesis statements in, um, I might set up a discussion board or something where you can check, you, you can exchange good sources. Now that all the people using the same source, because hopefully you're going to be doing different stories, uh, different points of comparison, and things like that. We'll figure it out. We'll see if people are having trouble finding sources. Sometimes can't get to the thing. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but let me know if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.